How you guys doing? Welcome inside my grill room again. Hey, today is February 11th, 2014, and um, I want to do uh, a, an update or a video on my yellow pear tomatoes. Um, so in honor of that, I'm wearing this hideously ugly yellow uh, golf shirt here because golf is like my second passion next to, uh, well, let's see. I would have to say family, kids, wife, followed by gardening, followed by golf. Those are my pleasures in life, okay? So, with that being said, um, I do have this hideously ugly shirt on. And it is to honor the heirloom tomato. And in this case, it is a yellow pear tomato. And it's been around for hundreds of years, or 150 years. So, again, it's living since seed. It generates a small... Um, uh, cherry, yellow cherry tomato. It is in the shape of a pear, if you will, hence the name yellow pear, right? And I have two of them growing inside this room, and I have one growing in a deep water culture. What's that mean, right? Deep water culture is a five gallon bucket with a nutrient solution in it, and it also has a uh, aquarium hose hooked up to a uh, grow stone or uh, an air stone sorry grow stone an air stone okay and what that does is that with when, when it's hooked up to a pump that'll oxygenate the water and that'll provide roots to to or provide oxygen to the roots of the plant okay um, I also have a uh, plant growing in uh, coconut core okay and I did notice a couple of differences between the two plants one is uh, before I show them to you one is is that uh, the foliage and the um, in, in the the foliage and the aggressiveness of the deep water culture plant far outplayed uh, or far outperformed the one grown in coconut core uh, the, the, however with that said the one in coconut core uh, produced fruit faster. Why? I have no idea. They were both started at the exact same time. Um, and, and by producing fruit, I mean it ripened faster on the vine. We've been picking clusters. I've probably picked 50 or 60 of these, of these things off the coconut core plant. And today is the first day where I probably will be able to harvest off of the deep water culture plant. Now with the deep water culture plant, um, I'm getting bigger fruit. And I kind of thought that would happen, okay? Um, and the only reason I say that is, is because the roots are constantly submerged in a nutrient solution. It's got oxygen, it's got the nutrient solution, it's got the light, it's got everything it needs to grow in here. So it's, it's really easy on the plant, okay? So it's gonna really perform. Now, the one in the coconut core, um, it, I have to hand water that every day, okay? I don't have it set up on a drip system or anything like that. So I come in and I hand water that thing every day. And it gets what it needs and the rest drains off, right? Uh, so it's kind of a waste. It's, a, it's, a, it's what's called a drained away system. And I'm not uh, all that um, fond of it, to be honest with you. I really like the ease of growing in a deep water culture. So I think after this video, um, I'm going to let the clusters on the coconut core... Uh, the clusters, yeah, the clusters of tomatoes. I'm going to let them ripen up, um, and then I'm going to take it down because I think just the ease of growing in deep water culture is, is just, it's, it's awesome. So, first off, um, flowering vegetables, they need lots of light, right? Um, your cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes, okay? They need lots of light. What do I got in here? If you've watched any of my previous videos, you will know that I run two 400-watt um, bulbs in here. I've got the one directly over my bald head um, off right now. The one by the camera I have on. Um, the one by the camera is a 400-watt uh, sodium bulb, which gives off a red hue, okay? Um, it gives off more of a reddish, yellowish light spectrum, right, that the plants use. And then the one above my head is a 400 watt metal halide, and that gives off a green spectrum. The intent of that is, in this particular room, is to mishmash those two sets of colors, okay? So that the plants get a mixture of all of the color spectrum. Um, also over here I have a T5 supplementing um, some of my lettuce that I got growing right here too. So, But really this T5 isn't doing anything for, for these flowering vegetables. So. 
the lights are on 12 hours a day, 12 hours off. They've been like that ever since I started. Um, secondly, uh, what are we doing for nutrients? Nutrients is important, right? The first six weeks of the grow for both plants, whether it be coconut core or deep water culture, I used um, a Dyna Grow Liquid Grow Plant Fruit Food. It's a 795, super concentrated. I like it a lot, okay? For um, the deep water culture, it's easy to mix, right? It's uh, for every five gallons of, of this, I put in five um, teaspoons. Or one of these children's um, medicine cup type things, okay? Secondly, uh, on, on that, um, ever since the birth of the plants, if you will, Okay, I added a Kelmeg supplement. Now, why do I add a Kelmeg supplement? I add a Kelmeg supplement because I don't want the plants to suffer from blossom end rot. Blossom end rot is due to a Kelmeg deficiency, okay? And that means uh, it'll rot at the blossom end of the fruit and it makes, makes it unedible and, and it also can generate bacteria and fungus and crap like that and you don't want that stuff. So, if you want to prevent that from happening, I highly suggest you add a CalMag supplement. Now from week six on, okay, life of the girl by the way, I mean, ever since from start to finish there's been a CalMag supplement. By the way, how much did I use? For deep water culture I added uh, uh, four, yeah, four teaspoons for each five gallons, okay? And we'll get into nutrient maintenance in a minute. After six weeks, I switched over to the bloom, okay, and that will in, that uh, lowers the nitrogen levels and increases the, the last two numbers, which is the, your phosphorus and potash, okay? And what that does is that um, stimulates more uh, flowering on your plants, okay? And that's, that's really what you want after about week six after transplant. And so I kicked into this, and it's the same method. For the deep water culture, it's uh, five teaspoons five gallons okay and that is pretty much it for the nutrients so every nutrient change how often do I do my nutrient changes good question I'm glad you asked and in the deep water culture I do my nutrient changes every two weeks as the and, and so I'll put in five teaspoons of bloom and four teaspoons of CalMag, and I'll adjust the pH down into about a 6.0 range, okay, with some pH down. And um, it's been working really well for this plant, okay. And I, I change it out every two weeks. I've got a really simple method. I'm going to do a video on uh, how I change my nutrients out coming up soon. I won't do it in this video. Um, but it's, there's a really simple way of changing out deep water culture and you just need what, this one little $15 gadget and I'll show you again in a different video. Now, um, when the levels of water go down in my 5 gallon nutrient, I, f I fill it back up uh, and I keep it topped off with just standard tap water. Okay, So I never get the bucket get too low um, with the water. Again, the lights are on 12 hours on, 12 hours off. The pump that runs this, uh, that oxygenates the water in the nutrient solution does not run 24 hours a day. Most hydroponic growers will tell you that it needs to run 24 hours a day. That is wrong. They do, it does not have to. If you do leave a little bit of an air gap between the bottom of your net pot and the nutrient solution, it's going to build, uh, grow some air up, uh, air oxygen absorbing roots okay so if you run your pump at uh, 12 hours on 12 hours off along with the lights um, then your plant will survive those 12 hours without any oxygenation okay just don't top your nutrients off all the way to the top okay just leave a little bit of an air gap there and they'll survive that 12 hours and then the pumps will kick back on it'll provide oxygen the plant will be happy right it's not very and it doesn't stress the plant out to lose oxygen it doesn't drown the roots in just 12 hours okay so uh, just a, there's a money saving tip there uh, for you now on the coconut core, I uh, do a little bit differently. I do um, three, no, I do five milliliters 
of whatever nutrient I'm using in whatever phase it is. Uh, if it's in a, in a grill phase or a bloom phase, I use five milliliters per gallon of, of uh, water uh, and I do add uh, the like three or, or two or three milliliters of the Kelmeg, okay? And because the coconut core is a drain to waste, I don't want to just continually hit this thing with nutrients constantly because I would go through nutrients like crazy. So I weaken the solution to hand water them, okay? And uh, the results were okay. Uh, the, the plant does look a little bit spindly. Now, when I do show you the plants in a minute, keep in mind that they are heavily, heavily, heavily pruned. I grew them single stem up a string, okay? And, uh, and then tied it up with some jute twine. Um, but they are heavily pruned. These are not like your tomatoes that you would see outside that are big and bushy, right? I don't want them big and bushy in here. All I want is the fruit, right? So I leave just enough leaves on the plant for it to generate photosynthesis, for it to generate some sugars, for it to stimulate growth, that type of thing, and to keep the plant alive. If I let these things get all big and bushy in this room, man, I wouldn't have any room to grow anything else. So I do... Um, uh, I do uh, prune these things quite heavily. In fact, I shot a video on how I prune these things, um, and so why don't we take a look at that. This is from about two or three weeks ago, okay? And you can see how I prune these things off, and it's pretty drastic, right? And then once you're done watching that video, we'll kick back into here. I'll show you where the plants are now uh, after three week, two or three weeks after the pruning, and uh, We'll discuss uh, maybe production and call it a wrap on this, okay? Take a look. How you doing? Welcome back inside my grow room here. I'm going to try to hold the camera as steady as I can. I don't have it on a tripod. And normally I set it on a ladder when I'm talking into it. But anyway, I'm not doing that today because I'm just going to shoot a, a, a quick short video of what I do with my tomatoes. Uh, when they start to get real bushy. Um, I'm growing obviously inside a confined environment. I'm growing inside a grow room. Uh, I have two tomatoes. Well, actually I got six tomatoes going inside here, but two that are pretty mature and starting to produce. Um, the two that are starting to produce are a yellow pear tomato, and I'll do a specific video on those uh, later on. Uh, but I wanted to do a quick pruning video on these things. And... Um, I guess, for one thing, uh, when you're working inside a confined environment like this, you don't want your uh, tomatoes to get all bushy, right? You don't want, you want I, what I do is I grow indeterminate varieties that grow in a single stem and they grow upwards and I prune what's called the suckers off and I also prune all the excess foliage off uh, below, you know, the fruit. So uh, that's what I've been doing. I've let it go quite a while. Uh, and now it's time to get some suckers off of this thing and get some leaves off of this thing. And it's going to be pretty drastic, right? So, uh, don't freak out. The plant won't die. Uh, what, the, what the intent here is, is really, is to direct as much energy into the fruit production in terms of ripening and size uh, and not to the leaf production, right? And some of these old leaves that are on this thing, uh, I suspect the the plant is spending a lot of energy trying to keep them going, so it's it's better off just to just to whack them out of there. Plus, what happens here is you get to um, by pruning these leaves off, uh, you increase a lot of airflow, and what I'm hoping it does is it puts the plant into like emergency mode, right? But it says, okay, I'm getting all my w limbs whacked off here. Uh, it's time for me to ripen up my fruit and keep it going because what's I mean, what's a plant's main purpose, right? It's to reseed itself. It's to keep this, the species going, right? I mean, that's pretty true in most anything. So, I mean, humans, bacteria, germs, plants, whatever, it's, it's, their main purpose is to reproduce here. And, and so that's, that's what this thing's gonna, you know, these plants are doing. So we, uh, we prevent them from reproducing because we eat them, right? So, uh, at least that's what I'm going to do, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, so I'm going to try to put this plant into some emergency mode so I can start getting some produce off of it. Uh, so, 
let's take a, a quick before here. I'll show you what I'm going to whack off. And then, uh, whack off. Really? Anyway, show you what I'm going to clip off here. And then, um, I'll give you an after type of a thing, okay? So, anyway. Yellow pear heirloom tomato. Uh, it is, like I say, heirloom. So you can uh, save the seeds and, and replant them and all that, all that nonsense, right? And this I just want to try out. This is the first tomato I've actually grown in my grow room. And I just want to kind of try it out and see, you know, as a test run to see if, you know, plant will grow in here. Obviously it does uh, grow pretty well. I got it growing on a single stem. Um, and I'm growing it up a string. And right now it's about six, seven feet tall. Uh, it's got about a foot to go before it hits the ceiling. And I, like I say, I'm gonna do a specific video on this and I'm gonna compare a deep water culture versus coconut core um, on this thing. Cause I got, I got the same exact plant going in two different methods. And there are some differences there uh, in terms of plant growth that I've noticed. So, what am I gonna prune off? What I'm gonna prune off are suckers and a whole bunch of leaves here but well I guess what is a sucker I mean YouTube's loaded with videos of how to prune suckers off but anyway I'll do my quick version you have your leafy branch coming off the main stem here's the main stem right of a tomato plant and you have your leafy branch which is, which comes out um, almost perfectly horizontal from the main stem and then in between here, in the armpit of the main stem and the leaf branch here, is you've got another, what looks to be, tomato main stem coming off. And this is what it'll look like if, if you let them go a long time. And you shouldn't really let them go a long time, right? And so what you want to do is you want to snip these off. And that keeps the plant from um, getting all bushy and crazy, right? And so... I will start working on that and I have quite a few suckers that are going on this thing and then I'm going to plant prune off all the old leafy foliage. I want some air production, I want to put the plant in emergency mode and I want it directing as much energy as it can to the fruit. So here's a quick before, healthy healthy plant, looks good, right? And then I'll come back after I'm done with the suckers and then all the extra foliage. All right, I'm back, man. And you are gonna be like, holy cow, if you've never done this before, uh, you're gonna be like, wow, you killed the plant. And trust me, I didn't. I do this outside with my other plants, uh, and I get all the leaves off. And you leave some leaves at the top of the vine because you want some photosynthesis still going on, right? But you want, look at this. See, I want all of these to start ripening up, okay? And so, they're little cherry tomatoes. They turn yellow. And I mean, I got clusters and clusters and clusters of these things going on here, right? And I got some more coming on up here. But anyways, here's what it looks like after it's pruned out. It's really bare. And then I left the top foliage you know, to get some more. So, anyway, pruned it down really good. Uh, left the clusters hanging on there to ripen up. Um, and believe me, the plant's not going to die, and it's okay. It looks funky, right? But what it did was is it opened up a whole lot of air circulation in here, and it opened up room for the peppers here so they don't get all shaded out and I'll do a video on those later so anyway that's it take care goodbye okay so let's start off with the coconut core plant okay again it's grown in coconut coconut how do you like that coconut core I do have some perlite in there um, to add a little bit of oxygenation to it and, and again this is a hand water type of a deal right and so let's take a look up the plant. Now it's starting to get old, this plant, right? And it's starting to live out its life, so it looks pretty funky, right? And this is, of course, after a really good um, pruning, okay? 
and the leaves are starting to turn a little bit and and whatnot but it is growing all still growing all the way to the rafters and now bear in mind that I did top this plant about four weeks ago so some of the suckers I haven't pruned off of there are, are growing up basically I'm letting this plant grow out now if you look down here I mean I have picked cluster after cluster here's one that's after cluster after cluster after cluster after cluster I mean I've picked at least I don't know 40 50 60 of these things here's some that are ripening right now that are ready almost ready to go I've got clusters and clusters and clusters left on this plant so it is producing pretty good okay and so I'm gonna let this finish out it's just crazy to me that I have to like reach almost two feet over my head to pick I'll have to pick these you know Anyway, so that's the coconut core plant. You've seen the pruning video, and this uh, pretty much hasn't generated any new foliage since. Uh, it's just working on uh, finishing up the fruit, which is fine by me because I'm pretty much over the hand watering stuff. Now, let's switch on over to the deep water culture. Now, you'll notice that, all right, I have this weight on there. <laughs> to hold the plant down because I'm growing it in a, like a two or three inch net pot which I'll never do that again anyway uh, why don't we just start off with a quick look at the roots okay and now mind you this is uh, being videoed under a sodium bulb which is giving off a red yellowish hue okay so uh, if you can't tell I'm sorry but those are some super, super white roots, and it is a huge root mass. It goes all the way down into the bottom of that bucket, right? And so it looks like I need a little bit of a top off there, which I'll do after this. But anyways, let's start taking a look at the plant. You'll see all the new foliage that popped up after the prune. And it just keeps going and going and going and going and going and all the way into the rafters <laughs> and you see some of the uh, older leaves up all the way up top right uh, and and actually they're not older leaves they're newer leaves right but the problem is is they're not getting any of the light um, but what's amazing is you know at about the eight foot mark is more tomatoes that are ready to be pollinated right and those are, uh, this is a tall plant. I mean, this is uh, eight, nine, ten foot into the, into the air, and it's uh, pretty much ready to be, um, I think, topped off and finished. All right, what are we talking for fruit here? So the fruit isn't as easy to see as it was on the other plant because there's some foliage here, but, I mean, look at this. I probably got 50 tomatoes just down in here. I mean, they're wrapped all up. Boy, I can't keep the leaves off sorry about that but there's cluster and cluster and clusters and clusters if I swing back around this way I mean just this level alone there's there's probably 50 of them in there um, again yellow that's all they are just little dudes right and I'm gonna have a cluster here and a cluster there hopefully I Sorry guys, I'm eating that. And cluster here, cluster here. I got clusters in the back and the front. So, I got new uh, ones forming. Now this is what they look like a couple of days after being pollinated. I'll talk about pollination in a little while. I got more right there. So it, this has been cool, man. This has been really cool. I'm really, uh, I'm really digging this plant. So. Again, this is heavily pruned. This is about three weeks after the prune, and you'll you'll you you see the new foliage coming out, which is cool. It's it's it looks nice and young and healthy. I don't know how long I'm going to run this plant for, to be honest with you. But I am enjoying eating the tomatoes off of them. So uh, I will uh, stop videoing this. Okay, so you got to take a look at the plant, and um, 
I hope you're somewhat semi-impressed with that. And the reason I say that is, 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 is I'm impressed with it. A tomato plant is a tropical plant. A pepper plant is a tropical plant. A cucumber plant, well, I don't know if that's tropical or not, but th those plants grow in hot, humid environments, man. I'm growing it in a unfinished part of my basement in the middle of Michigan, in the middle of January in Michigan. That's that's pretty cool, right? Or, or am I just crazy? Okay, maybe I'm crazy. Anyway, so... You got to see that. I'm probably going to have to top off these plants uh, because they are growing up into the rafters now. And you probably noticed, uh, uh, again, a, quite a big difference between growing in coconut core and growing in a deep water culture. I'm going to grow everything in a deep water culture from now on. Alright, last thing I want to touch on. Actually, two more things I want to touch on. One is pollination, okay? I don't have bees and insects and whatnot in this room, okay, to pollinate. And uh, for the most part, tomatoes are self-pollinators, right? If you generate enough wind, um, when the flowers open up, they're going to drop down uh, their pollen and um, they're going to self-pollinate, essentially. As a um, safety net, uh, there's a thing called buzz pollination, okay? And this is really quick, simple, and easy. And the germination rate on this is between... Or, or pollination rate on this is like 90 to 100 percent. What you do is, 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 is you get yourself a uh, electric toothbrush, turn it on, right? And all you have to do whenever a flower opens up is just set it on top of that flower. And what you'll notice is, is you'll notice the pollen drop, right? As soon as the pollen drops, you're good to go. That will pollinate your flower. Like in two days, you're going to see a, 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 the the tomato shrivel, or not the tomato, the flower shrivel up, and the and the tomato start to form, and that is really cool, right? So instead of wind or going in and shaking your plant and hoping for the best, I suggest getting if you want to grow tomatoes inside and you want to pollinate them, right? Leave it in your grow room. Uh, lastly, let's talk about production because what would growing this stuff be without production? I did not pick and weigh all the fruit off these plants. They're, they're just little tiny cherry tomatoes, dude. I mean, here, let me pick one real quick. Okay, I just picked one. I mean, I, I'm just not going to weigh them. I did count them, okay? Each plant has over a hundred. I stopped at a hundred. Okay, so each plant has over a hundred. I've already picked in excess of, I don't know, 40, 50 tomatoes off the coconut core one. I am going to get probably at least 120 to 150 off of um, the one in deep water culture. How do they taste? Believe it or not, if you leave them on the vine to ripen, these things taste outstanding. I've read some comments online that says they're kind of grainy or mealy, um, and I don't know if that has to do with, you know, maybe a bad summer grow or something outside. Uh, I don't get any of that. It's they're a little acidic, they're a little sweet, they're they're good, man. I, I've been munching on them as I come down in the room and check out my plants, so. Uh, I'm I'm liking them. Would I grow them again? Hell yes, but I would grow them outside. And the reason I say that is is because if you're going to spend the money um, to operate a room like this, you want more bang for your buck. And you don't get a lot of bang for your buck with cherry tomatoes. And so my next grow that's happening behind me here that you can't see because the plants aren't tall enough yet are um, San Marzano's. And I have one mortgage lifter here, which is a big beefsteak tomato. And so I'm going to obviously do videos on those. I already have a video on how to start the San Marzano's. And I'm going to have an update video here in probably about a week or so on 30-day uh, status of those. So um, subscribe to my channel, like, comment, do whatever you want. I'm not here to make money. I'm here to just kind of share this passion that I have of growing uh, food. Uh, and, you know, in the middle of winter, this has been a fun little hobby right here to grow indoors. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, take care. God bless. Boom!